So about three and a half years ago, we welcomed the saw stuff cabinet saw into the shop. Now since then, a lot of stuff has changed in here, but the saw remains. I wanted to go over what has it been like? What works about this? What's worth it? What isn't worth it? In terms of all of these different accessories and parts. So let's go over the saw, the different parts, the accessories, the saw stuff technology. What are you really paying for here? What's the quality level like? Extra old saw stop, table saw setup review. Three years in the making. Yeah. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my three horsepower saw stop professional cabinet saw. It pretty much has all the accessories. Router table, outfeed table, gliding cross cut, overhead dust collection, down draft box, the mobile base. I mean, this was three and a half years ago, so things may have changed a little bit in terms of what saw stop offers, some details may have changed, but I think for the most part, it's pretty much the same. This is my first cabinet grade saw. Previously, um, I used job side saws, uh, the Walt and then the saw stuff, and those had, you know, like plastic waterproof tops, uh, and they work great. But this is my first one that has all this metal in it. The sheer size of it is, is larger, of course. So basically we have the main saw and this is actually relatively small. This doesn't take up that much room. And then it kind of just spread out. It's like when I look at this, the footprint, I mean, it seems rather large, right? And what are we really working with here? Almost eight feet, almost six feet. But of course it doesn't have to be this large. I think one of the features about this saw that I was most excited about initially was this cross-cut table. Like safety with a saw comes down to, okay, yeah, you don't want to cut your finger off, but safety is a lot about stability and support and, and being able to comfortably make cuts. And for that, this is, is great. We use this thing a ton, but one thing about it is that this does not replace a cross-cut sled. When you're looking for fine and specific cuts, this is really not what you want to use. You want to put a sled on there three inches here from the blade, so not super close. Now, if we take it out all the way, we are at roughly 43 inches from the blade. So that's how much space you have <laughs> to work with here. So you could put a panel, quite a large panel, and you have all that really nice support here. So this is exceptionally useful for large panels. So if you look at this floor here, glued together a lot of these wooden white oak flooring panels to put on the floor instead of doing it individually. The floor has been really great, uh, but basically it's 90 panels. So it's kind of the equivalent of 90 tabletops, I guess you could say. And we cut each and every one of those on here to trim them and to, to get nice crisp sides and I don't know what we would have done without this saw. You know, of course you could have done it some other way, but it was super useful for that. For fine, detailed precision work, um, this is not the best. Well, this is really great. Every now and then, it's a little bit in the way. So if you're gonna go out, like you can take this out really far, which is nice, but you know, you're gonna cut something and this is, it's right here. Well, it's actually pretty easy to take off. It's not a big deal. So basically this has like a button underneath here that you, you loosen. A great thing to have on hand are the hex key set that has the ball on the, on the end. There is a part right here that you can tighten. I usually have it untightened. So all you do to take it off is you loosen that. If it's tightened, you loosen this and then all you and comes off. If I want to put it back in again, I line it up. I also line this guy up in under here. And I tighten. Now with this here, you can also easily remove this if you want. I tend to keep it straight. Now on, on my two previous um, table saws, I built outfit tables for those. That's what I was initially first planning on doing here too, but then I did realize that they offered this outfit uh, folding table. So basically it has these rollers here and you can 
you can bring this up, which I never do anymore, and you can bring this down, it basically folds it away, so it's not in your way. Initially, I was kind of like, it looked a little bit weird, it has all this open space, but I've come to really like this, this outfit table. I keep it up for the majority of time, you know, unless there's uh, something where you need space to move around or whatever, but for the most part, um, I think this has been really great. I think the rollers are useful. I did take it off at one point, and to put it back on again because I really missed it. So this is the router table attachment. It just extends the length of the table saw, which is something that I really like. Now, do you need a router table attached to your table saw? No, you do not, but it's very nice. This is the downdraft box. And this is that what holds the router. And this is also what brings the dust in. The one thing that I like about all this saw stuff, you know, the construction of everything is that everything is just very well thought through. The position of the tools, I mean, everything is right there. So you're not gonna go looking after them. They have a fence right here. It slips in easily and you can put it back. The way you line it up, there's a ruler here and you line it up identical on both sides. You tighten it and you have a nice fence and then there are two dust collection here so you have area for a hose to come in here and then there's the downdraft so any dust comes in here so this one comes in the back here and then we have another hose that comes right here so it's connected to the same thing and I just use the same hose as I have on to the, uh, the, the, the dust collection of the table saw so I move it whenever I use it and this setup works really well. It's very good for dust collection. Now, I find that I use the roundover, oh, I should grease that a little bit. I find that I use a roundover bit the most, so that's what I tend to keep on here. Now, one of the things that appealed to me about the router table before um, getting it was this idea that you would always be ready, that there would be less setup for when you were in the middle of working and you needed to round something. And I do think in terms of workflow, that is really nice going in between different things. A large table surface like this, I think is <laughs> both really great and also not so great because it's so easy to just have it become a, a place to put things and that's not ideal. But at the same time, having this kind of wide open space for when you are doing woodworking, I love that the, the router table becomes like an extension of the whole saw. And in some ways it takes up less space than if you have a separate router set up elsewhere. Because then you have to think about dust collection reaching somewhere else and here you can kind of share the same system. Um, now, also just have a handheld router. And this I tend to use a lot, it's going outside if I'm routing something and I want to avoid like dust. So then I take it outside. But other than that, um... let's talk about dust collection. So we have a hose coming from here and then I have a split here, a smaller one and a bigger one. And the smaller one comes through here. So this is like the overhead dust collection. So originally I had their overhead dust collection system that had this kind of piping in the way it moved stuff. I took that down because I did not like it. So now I just have this hose connected here and I can kind of move it around, which I think works better. Overhead dust collection in this situation, I think it is really important. It doesn't work that great though. Okay, so before this setup, I had my previous saw and then I had a little shop vac that I had on a shelf above and that funneled into the overhead dust collection uh, so that there were two separate units and that worked really great. And I have tried this system here using my Rockler dust collection and my Grizzly dust collection. And there's the same issue with both. The Grizzly dust collector is more powerful. The issue is not the dust collector that you're using. It's that you're using one dust collector for both things. And this, I think, could be designed a little bit better. Now, another thing that I don't love is this part right here. Now it's nice and clean, but sawdust tends to get clogged in here, um, especially when you get kind of like curlier, little thready sawdust. It gets stuck in here and then impedes the airflow and it doesn't work anymore. So you have to take it apart and you have to get that dust out and it's a little bit annoying. And it's really one of the things that frustrates me most about the saw this part right here. And I actually had this shatter at one point too, uh, part of this plastic shattered, because it was um, 
got caught a little bit. This fence right here is really nice and smooth and with this longer addition of the uh, router table here you can go quite far. You can cut you know, a big sheet of plywood very easily and you have a lot of, a lot of space to do it. Um, this has both metric and inches which I think is a nice feature that they have both of them. Um, this works really nicely, has a really good grip, I like that. Um, right here we have the, this is a standard size hex key that you use on the saw a lot. And this is magnetic here, so you can just just this right there. Um, and here we have their miter gauge. Nice thing here, it has a good feel. It has spaces here where you can, uh, for a fence, move it this way. And if you want to, if you wanted to put it in a different slot, you can also do it the other way. Obviously, I only keep the riving knife on when I'm not doing a through cut. And whenever I am making full cuts, I always keep this on. Uh, you have the blade guards and uh, what do you call these guys? So obviously this is a saw stop saw, so it comes with the saw stop technology. So we've only had it activated one time. Um, and that was because it was a stupid mistake. Here is the saw blade that got, basically it gets jammed into this cartridge here when uh, you have a situation. It happens super fast and you can kind of just see what it looks like here. It, it makes both the blade and the cartridge unusable. It just jams it in the blade. So now just keep it on the wall here. It's kind of a momentum. Once that happens, I mean, the, the blade moves into that cartridge and, and both you know, are useless. You can't use them anymore. You need new ones. So it's kind of an expensive problem if you have it too often. Obviously, if it saves your finger, that's huge. Um, but you don't want it to activate in cases where you know, you're trying to do something. Because remember, the way this works is that it's conductive. So if it senses, the computer here senses that there is water from your finger um, or like metal, it will activate. So that means that you don't want to cut anything on here where there is a high moisture level, if there is any metal in the wood, you know, if you use like reclaimed wood or anything like that. Now, one thing I do wish was a little bit easier on the saw would be to deactivate this saw stop feature. You can do it, but there's a whole sequence to doing it and um, I haven't successfully done it and it just kind of made me like, I don't want to even touch it. I just want to leave it the way it is. But that means that I'd never cut anything on here that is um, a little bit on the wet side, um, anything with like possibility of metal. So that is something I, I love the saw stop feature, but I wish it was a little bit easier to occasionally deactivate. It's not a big deal or anything, but and I don't know if they have changed that on some of like the newer models, if it's easier. I really don't know. So here we have um, an additional cartridge and here we have another one. Now as you can see the difference, um, this one's bigger than this one. So why would you need a bigger cartridge? So if you want to cut data on the saw stop using the saw stop technology, um, you need to use their specific uh, data stack and their cartridge. This will work together. If you have a traditional data stack, that won't work with this. So something to keep in mind um, if you are planning out this purchase, the chart will tell you how to create a different uh, thicknesses. They have um, different spacers and chippers and shims. So depending on <laughs> what thickness you're looking to accomplish, you, you stack these in various ways. So when you're buying a saw stop saw, you are obviously buying the saw stop technology, but you're also buying like the quality. So basically we're seeing if there's a lot of variation in this one right here. I mean, this is exceptionally flat. I mean, there is no variation whatsoever this direction. Now, where there are slight differences is where the seams are. And those are things that can move a little bit over time um, and that you can, you know, you can alter, you can change them. Although it's not much. So exceptionally flat metal 
Very nice. Let's put the blade up. On the zero. So that is perfect. So 45 exactly on the gauge and we get 45 right there too. So it, so it corresponds perfectly with the angle. I mean, which is exactly what you want to see. There's a lock here, lock it in place. And there's also a lock here. Lower it. One thing I like to do from time to time is check if the, uh, the fence, the measurement is correct. Cause this is all screws here. So sometimes it can move a little bit. Okay, let's move the fence. So we have our one inch here corresponding perfectly to our one inch there. So this right now is perfectly set up. Otherwise you can just loosen this and move this just a touch until you get it absolutely accurate. Now, one of the biggest changes for me when it came to this saw over my old table saws was this beautiful cast iron top. So much metal, right? Really nice to work with. But the one thing about it is that it does tend to get rusty over time, especially if you're not on top of it. So what I like to do, and I probably should do a little more frequently than I am, is to put some of our mineral oil uh, wax polish. This is beeswax uh, polish with mineral oil, which is perfect for this because it doesn't cure, it stays kind of wet. And that's exactly what you want on a metal surface. So I just use some fine steel wool and I apply it everywhere. It's also nice to put in the, the miter slots, make sure things move, nothing gets stuck, any jigs, any miter gauges. And so in addition to just like preventing <laughs> rust from forming, with the steel wool you can remove some slight rust spots and it would also just make the wood move better when you're cutting, so. <laughs> and we offer this wax polish and well, all the wax polish that we produce here in the shop uh, that's available to purchase at darbenover.com. I'll put the link in the description. Um, if you want to support the channel and pick up a tin or two for yourself so that you can take care of your, <laughs> of your metal <laughs> table saw or pan saw or, you know, jointer, planer. <laughs> Everything needs to be, <laughs> to be waxed, let me tell you. It's like when you look at it, it just kind of looks like a monster. It's so large and there's like so many parts to it and so much metal. And I was thinking to myself, if I were to get this again, like what's worthwhile getting? Fundamentally, what you're looking for when you get a saw like this is a, it's a table saw, right? A really good table saw that's gonna do a good job, be super stable, have these nice details. And the saw itself, I mean, you get all that. So all of these other things, they're just kind of cream on top, right? Like the router table, very nice addition. But if you already have a nice router setup, then like it's probably, you know, not worth it. The sliding crosscut table. This is a feature that I really like. It's a feature that I find super useful sometimes. And I think in many ways, if you're trying to save space, for example, uh, I mean, this does take up more space, but if you have like a miter saw station, personally, <laughs> Very rarely use a miter saw after we got this. We have like a battery miter saw set up and then we take it out very occasionally uh, to use. But for the most part, we just use this instead because it is nice and safe and precise. And they're like these stop locks. So that works really well. And if you want to be able to cut large sheets of plywood, you know, large rough sawn pieces, things like that, more like safely and more easily, then the sliding table saw is a super nice feature. I think if anything, that's what I would splurge on. That's what I would get. The folding outfit table, nice, but you know, you can make your own folding outfit table. So it's not really that necessary. Wheelbase, highly recommend that because this is a beast. It is so heavy to move around. And even though you think that you're not going to move it, you never know. <laughs> you may be in a situation where you want to uh, move it and, 
having the wheels just makes uh, such a difference. Obviously with this saw stop feature you want to you know be prepared that you might activate this cartridge and you want to have a couple of cartridges on hand and a couple of extra blades. It might happen not because you put your fingers too close but just because something there's a moisture level in the wood or something like that. So if I were to rate this over this uh, almost coming up on almost four years I mean it's, it's an amazing saw and there certainly are a couple details that I don't love um, dust collection being one of them. It's not a terrible dust collection system, it just doesn't work like super great. And I think that the overhead shop vac system is something that I would actually like to do again because I think that would work um, a lot better. But I love all the little details of, of how the saw works. And that's what really separates a nice product from something that's not as nice. When all the details, like how the blade moves up and down, how the fence moves, how you lock it in position, all of those things are really solid. Um, I basically love this thing. I mean, it has been a great addition. We've gotten so much use out of it. It definitely feels like a, like a real workhorse at the same time. It feels a bit like a luxury because I know how nice it is. Um, at the same time, a saw is a saw is a saw, right? It will do the same job as my first DeWalt saw in many ways. So it's obviously not necessary to have something like this in order to cut wood. Not at all. But is it nice? Yes, very nice. So yeah, um, let me know your thoughts. Do you have any interesting saw stop experiences or I don't know, maybe <laughs> what is your experience with table saws in general? Because it's a whole world, isn't it? Uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna clean up a little bit here now <laughs> to get so many things. If there was something I didn't cover, because um, I was trying to be really thorough with this video and make sure I really covered a lot of stuff, but you know, you always miss something. So just you know, let me know in the comments below. It's funny, once you start waxing surfaces, you kind of feel like you want to wax everything. <laughs> you want to just like take care of all your stuff, right?